All right, today we're going to be going over a Polaris Magnum 330. This is a 2005 model, and they made several years of the 330 uh, Magnum. This is a four-wheel drive, and they call it an on-demand all-wheel drive, and I'll show you how to uh, put that into effect on this machine. It is an automatic. It's got the high, low, and neutral reverse and park, and that is determined right here on the shifter here. Park is in the position that it is now, and that is just all the way down. You've got to uh, engage your foot brake lever to put it into park and shift that machine. We've got the recoil pull starter directly below the shifter here. It looks like this, and this will be, if the battery is dead or you're just wanting a good workout, just go ahead and pull on this and it should start right up. Make sure your ignition is on, make sure your on off switch is in the run position. Uh, we've got your shift linkage down here and you adjust that. Um, you can adjust this shift linkage. I'll show you how to do that in a separate video. We've got your brake pedal. Uh, this is your right side brake pedal and it goes to your rear. So that has a hydraulic rear brake and is controlled by your right foot there. This foot well here is held on by four bolts. You can pull those bolts and move this uh, back and forth um, depending on your, if you're changing your oil, you want to make sure those four bolts are pulled out so you can get your oil filter easier. And this is your oil filter here. And then while we're on this side to trans change your transmission fluid, you've got a uh, 11 millimeter uh, wrench to, um, to drain this oil. And you come down here and there will be a larger, um, a larger hole in your skid plate here and you can just drain your uh, fluid using this 11 millimeter wrench here. To fill it then you've got a 14 millimeter uh, bolt down here and that is how you uh, refill your transmission fluid. Check your manual for uh, specs on that or ask in my questions or my comment section and I can get you those specs. Again, we've gone over your oil filter down here. You want to make sure when you're changing your oil that you um, that you run your four-wheeler beforehand for a little bit. You don't want it extremely hot, but then you can drain your oil. And there's a 14 millimeter plug directly underneath your motor here and this large hole here uh, going to your engine, not to be confused with the transmission drain plug that's over here. So again, 14 millimeter drain bolt here for your engine, pull your uh, oil filter and then we'll go around to the other side and I'll show you where to fill that. We've got uh, disc brakes on the front. Both sides have disc brakes and so you want to make sure that those pads are in great condition. Uh, make sure there's no metal on metal there. We've got CV shafts and we've got one bad CV shaft here. It's actually come apart on the joint but these CV boots here you want to make sure that these are not ripped. If they're ripped at all you want to get those replaced as soon as you uh, notice them ripped otherwise you're going to be replacing your CV shaft Again, I'll show you that on a separate video. Your on-demand, your four-wheel drive on-demand is uh, controlled by, um, this is called a, a hub here, a knuckle, and I'll show you that. Um, but this is your front strut here with your shock. We've got an oil cooler on this model, and uh, make sure that that is cleaned out and can air can flow through there. You've got a fan behind there. That'll hopefully cool your motor down. We've got your front differential here, and like I said, it's extremely dirty and definitely will need cleaned up before we do anything uh, as far as maintenance to this four-wheeler. But you've got a drain plug underneath your um, machine that is going to be an 11 millimeter, and that is going to be um, the, oh, right, right here. There's going to be two bolts that hold your front bumper on that look similar to your drain plug. So the one in the middle farther back is your drain plug. And that's going to be an 11 millimeter uh, drain plug. Your fill mark and your fill hole is here. It takes an 8 millimeter uh, Allen head and you fill that up right there. It takes a certain kind of funnel or uh, kind of a syringe type filler and I can show you how to do that. Um, but you want to pull that plug there. When it gets to where your fluid is coming out, your oil uh, is coming out of this uh, fill plug here you know that you're where you need to be as far as um, oil capacity. So again, make sure these boots are in great condition. These guards here are to help protect those boots, but sometimes uh, they don't do the best job. We've got your tie rods here. They're adjustable. Both sides are, so you want to make sure that your tires are going straight and you adjust those 
Uh, there's a lock nut on this side and in the middle there. Make sure that those are adjusted properly so your tires are wearing evenly and so steering is um, the best possible way. Uh, you've got boots on the either end of your tie rods there. You want to inspect those and check through those, make sure those are in good condition. Also, you've got U-joints here, and I've done several videos on replacing U-joints, but this is um, one of the U-joints that has a tendency of going out. And uh, again, check those videos to, on how to replace those. We're going up to, well, now we're on the left hand of the four-wheeler. If you're sitting on it, we've got your footwell here, and we've actually removed... Uh, the bolts out of this foot well so you can move it to replace your clutch here your clutch or your belt uh, Can be removed. You don't actually have to take this foot well off. We made a separate video on there Here is your oil dipstick. So right by your left toe is your oil dipstick when draining your oil Make sure that this cap is removed. That'll help that oil flow uh, out better and then there is your dipstick and your oil capacity on this model with the uh, oil cooler is gonna be 1.9 quarts so you want to make sure that uh, once you change your oil, install your uh, oil uh, drain bolt and put a new filter on and uh, put, put about one and a half quarts in, maybe a little more than that. Run your four-wheeler for a minute or two, shut it off and check your oil. And you do that right here on this dipstick. We've got your fuel shut off here. We've got a panel that we've removed already so you can see a little bit better in there. But we've got your fuel shut off and there'll be a hole right here on this panel to where you can shut it off right now. It is uh, horizontal so that it's in the off position. You've got on and you've got reserve on this model. So uh, make sure if you're wanting to travel or your four wheeler is going to sit for a while, turn it to the off position so that your fuel doesn't act, uh, drain out, possibly if your float sticks. Uh, spark plug is in behind this air duct here. You don't actually have to remove this air duct to change your spark plug. Just remove the panel again that's here and pull this cap off, replace that spark plug. We've got your carburetor back in here. And uh, we're gonna go around to the back side here. We've got your battery and your starter relay. Now, common problem on these four wheelers is um, you'll hear a clicking sound. And a lot of people think your starter's going bad at that point. That's not necessarily the case. A lot of times it is your battery. The, the clicking sound is coming from your relay. Doesn't mean your relay's bad. It means your battery's probably bad. So you wanna make sure that you've got 100%, even a good new battery um, sometimes doesn't come fully charged. And if your four-wheeler is clicking, don't automatically jump to the starter relay or replacing the starter. Make sure you check uh, your battery. Uh, make sure that it is uh, completely charged. On your back end here, we've got uh, hydraulic brakes on the rear, and they're just going to be on the left-hand side here. We've got a place to put a, a ball. You can just any kind of a ball out of uh, a standard receiver will fit in here. And then we've got your rear differential. This is a solid rear axle, as you can see that here. This side is exposed. This, this left-hand side is inside of um, this housing here. Um, to, to drain this oil, we've got a drain plug down below here. You can get to it, um, leaving the skid plate on. I like to pull the skid plate because it just leaves such a mess inside of this skid plate. And it just takes a couple bolts to do that. But your drain plug is here. I believe that's a 14 millimeter drain plug and then your fill bolt is here again same thing as the front you fill it up to this mark when you have oil uh, close to the top there that means you've got enough and saw so your fill plug and you are all set got your tail light there your exhaust muffler here we've got a, a center pipe here and then we've got a manifold uh, that attaches to the engine we're gonna pull that seat off now I'm gonna show you a couple things uh, underneath the seat there and I'm going to show you the dash quick. So the seat, uh, it's got a lever in the back. Uh, once the seat starts ripping at all, you're going to end up having a seat that looks like this. It just, once they start ripping, they seem to go quick. So seat is off now. We've got your air filter underneath here. You've got six tabs and you just pull these tabs here to get to the air filter. Remove this cap, your air filter is underneath here. Speedometer and the fuel gauge on this one, as you can see, is completely shot and destroyed. We've got your ignition switch here. This is a fuel level gauge, uh, typically is what is on these models. Uh, and they are very inexpensive, even from Polaris, you can get one of these um, for fairly reasonably priced. So replace these. If you leave it open like this, if your fuel, if you have your uh, problem, um, your four-wheeler isn't running good, 
First place I would check, make sure this isn't cracked or broken because what happens if this is outside or you go through some water, fuel, uh, water gets into your fuel right here. Again, I told you this is an all-wheel drive model, so we've got your switch over here to change this from two-wheel drive to all-wheel drive. And so um, you can see there, you've got it on and off. Off is obviously just gonna be in two-wheel drive. On, you're in all-wheel drive, and that is engaged. We've got your throttle level, thr throttle um, lever right here on this side. It's a push, push throttle, thumb throttle there. We've got your master cylinder on this side of a park brake. So this park brake, you pull this lever in, and you push this lever out. And the tighter you pull it, uh, the tighter your brakes will be. You don't have to sit there and really crank on it to install your park brake. Just pull it back and uh, push that forward. There's several different clicks that you'll kind of hear there. That means your uh, parking brake is tightening up. Got your lights on this side and uh, your on off switch here. Uh, you've got high and low beam right there. Your choke lever here, a lot of times, especially when it's cold, you have to pull that choke lever. Uh, let it run for a little bit and you can slowly push it in or after a couple minutes just go ahead and push that in and uh, that is all you'll have to do for your choke. Now I want to show you underneath this front cover here on this four-wheeler. We've got this compartment here. This lid is broke off and we've removed um, four 14 millimeter bolts on this cover and then there's two nuts underneath of these fenders that we've removed. One on either side. This one, there's a nut underneath the fender and I'll, same way with the other side. I'm pull this off here. And underneath this cover is all your uh, electrical components. And I just wanted to show you that quick. To get underneath, to get, to see underneath this cover, again, remove this housing here, this storage box, and you just lift up on this cover. And there's some snaps, but all it takes uh, is a little bit of pulling. I can show you there, those tabs, uh, just hold that on, they keep it secure. Oil cooler is down here. We've got um, all your control, um, as far, uh, your, your four-wheeler control box here, your ECU, you've got your regulator rectifier, and your ignition coil is here. So if you've got problems with spark um, or it's not starting, you wanna make sure that maybe a small rodent hasn't gotten in here and chewed these wires up. Common problem, especially if your four-wheeler sits in a shop during a lot of the winter. A lot of times mice will come in here and chew some of these wires up. We've got a brake switch here that can, um, once you get, uh, once there's pressure on those brake lines, that'll engage your brake light there. That is all I can think of on this Magnum 330 for now. If you've got questions or comments, make sure you go ahead and ask those below. If you like this video, please like it, uh, share this video, and please subscribe if you have, um, if you want to check out more of my videos. Thanks for watching.